going to make a two colored Halloween rose. This is Cobb. It's a, called a horizontal wide stripe mesh. We have it in every color you can think of now. Um, this particular one that I'm using, the black and orange. So you will see that there's stripes, um, striped mesh with, um, they do have, uh, we do have the solid colors that goes with all the stripes. So you could either use black or you could use the orange. We have both. Like I said, I'm going to make a black Halloween rose. I think it's going to be super cool. So this, just for uh, uh, FYI, this one is RE8902E8. That's the black and orange stripe. We have all kinds of different colored stripes. We still have more coming in. Um, I just, I, I just love this stuff. I love it, but I've never done a rose with it. That's why I'm going to do one. And this black um, is R E eight nine zero 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 two. It does not fray as bad as poly burlap, which is a plus. Um, now I'm doing a rose, so I didn't have to heat seal or wood burn anything. So, um, but it, like I said, it doesn't fray as bad. So, and it keeps, um, it's, it, it's very good coverage and it keeps its shape really well. So let's, let's make a rose with this stuff. All right, let me have a little sip here. I just finished an hour and a half of, in the VIP group tonight. No bling rope yet. It keeps saying it's on its way, we'll see. Um, I will let you guys know when the blink rope comes in. Like everything, everything's just backed up. Okay, so I'm going to be using the large board again. Okay, now when I did, I'm gonna just zoom down here. I wrote, I wrote my stuff on the board, okay? Because I am going to be alternating between black and black and orange. Okay, we'll see how funky this turns out. So we are gonna be doing every other for row um, two, for the going outwards, and then every other going inwards. So the new thing is I did the four spots on row two. I started at the top where the number two is. We're going to go to, to the bottom, right across, straight across, and the, the two sides. So we're starting at the four center points, okay? This mesh is, it says it's 10 inches, it's 10 and a half. I don't know, I, I, I've been through the wholesaler with this already, but it is 10 and a half inches. I am just cutting, I will be cutting my mesh 10 and a half by 10 and a half for the outside row. I only cut a couple because I did pre-make a whole bunch. So we're not totally here all night. So you're gonna cut right up through the different strips here you're going to cut 10 and a half piece inch pieces okay and i'm not going to go through too many of the um how to make the petal because it's the simple it's the same rose petal as always so you're going to take your piece of mesh hello good evening everybody i know i'm normally not on this late but i just had to try something and tomorrow's really busy and so is wednesday so tonight's the only time i could try it you're going to take your 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch piece, put it in a diamond shape. I have my factory edge at the top left, like I always do. We're going to take that top corner. We're going to bring it down to the bottom corner, meet the sides up like that. So if you have a perfect square, the sides should meet up. Do not worry about 
heat sealing or wood burning your mesh to make a rose because you will not see any of the, the edges of the uh, petals, okay? So don't waste your time. What I'm gonna do is pinch it in the center. So we have like a triangle shape or a, what is that, what did I call it? Stingray. You're gonna pinch it in the middle and I bring the two sides in. And this is what we have. Now, this is what I love about this mesh. It holds its shape so well. Not like a poly burlap where a poly burlap, once you flatten it, it kind of stays flat. So I'm going to take, oh, let me pull that out. I'm gonna take the tip, the end of my uh, petal here. And like I preloaded the four on row two, top, bottom, side, side. I'm going to go inwards towards the center of the wreath board and zip tie that in, okay? I'm gonna do this one now, exactly the same. Take your 10 by 10. Thank you for shipping me over the falls. Curl up, so when you let go of it, it curls it up, top, bottom corner. Alrighty, I'm gonna pinch it in the center, right down at the bottom tail here. So make our stingray or umbrella, whatever you want to call it. Take that tail, bring it into your preloaded zip tie on row two, towards the center, till the tail hits about the next row and zip tie it in, okay? I got a bunch already made here. So if you want to pre-make them like me, you just have to use little, little um, elastic bands that I get at the dollar store in the hair section. So you can make basket full, <laughs> basket full of petals all ready to go. And then you just whip them into your zip tie. You did try it. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm trying it again because I want to make sure that it, it, like really does work <laughs> work and that I've taught it properly. Okay, so we're gonna do four of these. All right, so we got the four. And now what we're gonna do is there's three holes on row one. One, two, three, in between each of these four petals. I even wrote on here, so I needed 20 black and 19 black and orange. So I knew how many to cut, okay? You're gonna put your zip tie in the middle hole of the three, just down and have it sitting on your board and table. You can do it up just a little bit. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the corner to your right, put it in, I want to make sure that the edges are lined up. Put this in. So you're kind of making an X, like an X shape in that zip tie. And then pull it tight. Okay, and then we're going to go just spin your, your uh, board around. We got the three holes again. Again, I'm gonna use this middle one. This is the new wide stripe. I, like I said, I've never made a rose with it, so we're trying it out on a Halloween rose. All righty. I wanna make sure that's lined up. And this will give that scalloped edge of the outside of the rose, but it also covers the side of the boards. All right, once you got it in, zip tie it up. One, two, three, again, we're going in the middle here. Like 
Now you don't want to tuck it in too, too much, just till the whole, you know, about an inch and a half, two inches of this corner needs to be in there. This was a pure 10 by 10 and a half by 10 and a half piece, but that's okay. I love how it keeps it, like if you can, if you open it up, look how it stays puffed up. This mesh is amazing. Not just for flowers, for everything. Now it's not as flexible as the snowdrift mesh that I used, but it, it will work. All right, there is our outside edge. I'm gonna open these up just a bit, so, because we don't want a cinnamon button. You wanna keep it nice and rounded. All right. Perfect, now we're gonna cut I'm going to cut these tails off. Make sure it's nice and tight so those corners don't slip out of the zip tie. This is a, it's called a horizontal wide stripe mesh. It's inexpensive. It's, it's pretty amazing. It comes in so many different fabulous colors. All right, and these are, I always have like a bucket here because I throw these in our plastic recycling after my little bucket gets full because they are recyclable, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go right where that zip tie, these four zip ties on row one. I'm gonna preload, which is going down and up. One, two, and I'm going to be using black and orange. So I have BO, BO, black and orange. Okay, so we got these four because we're going to put some black and orange in there. We are also going to put a zip tie over top of the zip tie that's already there on the petals where the tail is. And you'll see first in a second why. From the Sioux, well, hello from Sioux St. Marie. You definitely can make, you can make anything with this mesh. Okay, so I have some black and orange cut. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put the tail right in like we did with the black in the four where I have marked black and orange. You like my bolt cutters? <laughs> these are awesome. I sell these in the store. Um, they're for when I'm using uh, florals and stuff, but I, I end up grabbing them for everything. So everything I'm using tonight, you can buy on Unique and Creek. Dot com and there's all different colors so you can you can do a two-toned colored mesh or a re, uh, rose you don't have to do black and orange obviously but all right we got those four pieces in I'm gonna cut those tails off all righty 
Now what we're going to do is going to take the corner and put it in to this zip tie that we put over top of the black mesh here. And it's going to, once we zip tie them all in, it gives us a nice scalloped edge for our rows. Around and you just put each neighboring one in. And open these up because the mesh will puff up. We want the mesh to puff up because if you, if the mesh lays flat, it's going to look like a cinnamon bun. We don't want our rows looking like a cinnamon bun. Okay. So we have done that. Let's cut our we are done the outside row. And now you can take your mesh, just pull it so it opens up and it's kind of poofy. And this is going to fill up really quick once we start putting, adding everything in. Okay, so the only thing I have to do on row two is before I start getting into all the other rows, like rows five, four, three, because it'll start getting really full, I am going to preload these, these holes when you flip it over these empty ones. We're going to preload those because we're going to get to those at the end of the rows. And I do want to show you guys what I did for some green leaves. I put some green leaves we're going to put on this, but I did a real cool technique to the green mesh make it look spooky. Where are you guys going home? Mm -hmm. Danielle going home? Yeah. Bye Danielle. Hi, how's your life? Huh? How's your life? I'm alive again. <laughs> <laughs> I was live on the VIP group, now I'm live on my main page. Oh. <laughs> This is my second one. Well, oh, yeah. I had to. I wanted to get. Oh, this. Here from in the creek. No, that's Mitchell from here. From oh, Mitchell, you, it's you, Mitchell here from Unique in the Creek. You yeah. gotta make one. You gotta make one of these days. Yeah. We, we sell wreaths. You sell wreaths. You we don't sell wreaths. Wreath supplies. Everybody buy wants you to make a wreath. Buy it at uniqueinthecreek.com. Okay. Bye. No, but I want to see you make a wreath one day. Sorry, guys, that was my son and his girlfriend. They, I really want to see it. Call me. <laughs> because, Mom, I had to, I have so much going on this week, and I really wanted to do this Halloween rose. So, using this mesh, we're going to see how it works. All right, so we are done. So what happens is once you're finished preloading, the whole row will be having zip ties in it on row two, okay? So we got, and it's every other one we're gonna leave, be leaving blank there. What we're gonna do is now, now that we got the outside row done, we're gonna work on the inside and work our way out. So we're gonna do the rosebud.
I like to get my little clips or clothes pins, whatever, just to help me out holding the mesh in. So for the bud, I'm going to use a piece of stripe and two pieces of black. I don't know if I have any yellow black left over. Okay, so we're going to make the bud. I'll get a couple or zip ties. So when you do the bud, you're going to roll, roll, take your right, I'm right-handed, so I always grab the right corner, bring it in and kind of roll it in. I just try and do it slow. Roll it in so it's curled in and it's the corner is matching the tail like that okay and then we're going to take this and go around and still match the bottom corner so it, it kind of this is the inner part of the bud and this does take a little bit of practice i'll do that again you're going to take the corner and you're just going to kind of roll that and one half turn and just bring it down. And then we're gonna go around, take with the left corner, you just go around. And it, this is the back and just hold, hold that together like that. You can actually even put a clip on it or one of these little rubber bands. These little rubber bands are like fabulous for helping you make these flower wreaths, so you don't have to hold on to it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the center bud in the black and orange, and then I'm going to put this, take, now when you do your uh, rose petal, you can see there's a little indent. We're gonna use that indent to our advantage, okay? So I'm gonna take the my little uh whatever this is that sea urchin thing <laughs> i'm just gonna put the two together so that the, the tail is matching and i'm gonna wrap it just like i did the orange so i'm taking the right the right part bringing it over taking the left and we're gonna bring it around. And then I'm gonna do just one more. You can't barely even see the orange, so I could have probably did all black, but. Again, I'm using the divot that's in the mesh to my advantage, putting it just up against the rosebud. Stingray, thank you. It's late. I'm usually in, way in bed by now. <laughs> okay. So you might, you, you may have to sculpt this and mold it and everything to make your perfect rosebud. It, it does take a little practice. And with this mesh, it, it's pretty thick. I could have probably got away with only maybe using two pieces. Because it's it, like I said, it's really, really good coverage. But we'll see. We'll see how it works. Actually, this is supposed to go this way. The bud is a pain in the tooth. Because okay, now I'm going to take a zip tie. And I'm going to go around my bud once I have it the way I want it. Take a zip tie, go around it. And I'm going about a good, uh, it's the 20, about a four inches, no, three inches up from the bottom where I'm wrapping my zip tie around. four inches because I noticed that my winter rose 
the bud stuck out just a little more than I would have liked. Yeah, four inches. So from the tail to the zip tie is four inches, okay? Then I'm going to take another zip tie and I'm going to put it in behind the back of my bud. Like that. Cut this off. And then I'm going to put one in the front of my bud. Like that. I did this a little too tight. But we can, once it's in there, we can sculpt and mold it and everything. And all of this, we're going to cut a lot of this excess bulk off. Okay, so this is what we have. Once you get the outside done and the bud, everything else falls in place, seriously. And it's just a bit of practice. So now I, what I'm going to do is we got the back and the front with these zip ties and we have two holes right in the center of row five. I'm going to use the hole to one of these. So I'm going down with the tail. There's the head of that zip tie. We flip it over. I'm just doing it out. Uh, just doing it up till it's loose, till we put the other side in. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. So the tail goes down the middle hole. And then I'm going to put the head part down that one. Do it up. And we're going to put this right dead into the center. So hold it up like that, and then pull these tight. Ah! It came out of my zip tie. What the? I didn't zip tie this tight enough. Technical difficulty. Hold on. Let's see if I can get it back in there. Love, love, love live TV. Okay, I think I did it. There we go. I didn't pull that tight enough. There we go. Pull that sucker tight. really messed up the bud. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta redo that. Let's redo that. Okay, let's get a zip tie again. Maybe I should have went to bed. <laughs> really, maybe I should have went to bed. Is it all gone, the orange and black mesh? Now, if you want to do a Halloween wreath, you can, if there's no orange and stripe left, you can use orange and then black as well. And alternate. This is going to be my demise, is this stupid rosebud. Okay, let's try this again. I forgot to tighten the zip tie up after I put the, zip, the front and back zip ties in. Oh, it's tight. Okay, let's try. 
try this again. Yeah, I would rather me screw up than you guys screw up. That's why I'm trying this again, or trying the rows again, to make sure that my technique is actually okay. Center. Pull the zip ties. So I'm pulling underneath. Because once you get the outside done and the bud done, the rest is so super easy. And anybody that has made one before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There we go. Okay. Sticking out a little bit, but we'll, we can fix that. Oh, what the heck? Or I should have just went to bed. Okay, I'm gonna do the four on row five, so there's and four normal ones, one. right on the board so this is black black and orange black black and orange so I'm going to take my petal and where it's black and orange you're going to take the tail of it and go towards the outside of the board again using that little divot that's in there to your advantage to because we are going to wrap. So you see how I put the tail towards the outside. Once it's in there, pull it tight, clip that, and we are going to wrap it around that center bud. And this is where your little clips or clothes pins will come in handy. Gray duct tape for what? <laughs> Do you think, Judy? <laughs> I seen that she got married in Vegas. <laughs> All right, we did black and orange. You want to keep going to the neighboring uh, zip tie. So we're going to do black. Again, all going towards the outside of the board. The only place that go the tails go towards the inside of the board is on row two, your very first one. So you're gonna and just keep wrapping each piece going around. Oh, to attach it all. <laughs> all right. Okay, wrap it around. Well, this actually, this is going to turn out pretty cool. And we got one more here that's black. I know it's going to look cool because if you can see the side bud already, 
And there's actually a lot of people who like black roses. Especially at Halloween. I have this cool skull I was thinking of putting right in the center of the rosebud for the Halloween. So we'll see. I mainly wanted to test out this, this mesh making the rose. Oh, really? Maybe she did get married in the same place as me. I got married at the Little White Chapel. All right, we are done that row. And we're going to continue on. Good thing I marked all my, my things. So we're going to, we'll start with the black here. Doesn't matter where you start on the row, on each row. You just want, if you're going to start here, you just want to keep going around. You don't want to start, you don't want to put, put a piece here and then go in and put a piece there. It just won't look right. why I'm using these big bulky things. I'll use my zip tie gun. So every time you put a piece in, you just wrap it. Now we're starting to not be able to go all the way around with our wrapping. So I just grab a couple clothes pins and I just pin them up. Just to get it out of the way too. So I'm just alternating between the two colors. All right, black. And that's the nice thing about the uh, um, unique and creep boards. You can write your pattern right on to the board so you don't have to think about what color or what ribbon you're going to use. You can write it right there. That is super cool. I mean, they rode in the same car as me and Dave. Not we rode in the same car as JLo and Ben. <laughs> Oops, wrong one. So I'm just, you just keep going in all the way around with the um, your petal facing towards the outside. Pew, pew. I know bats or I don't know I had I don't have a lot of Halloween stuff um, but like I said I found this skull thought the skull would be really cool, right in the center of the rose. It's Halloween-y, but it's not scary, and it's kind of cool looking. And obviously, you can do this for Christmas, too. So you can do a red, red and white one, and it'll kind of look like a candy cane rose. So there's all kinds, and I'm really loving this mesh, I have to say. And then once, once we get everything in, we'll puff them all up and everything. You could even use black and purple. That 
would be cool too. Black and purple rose. You like it? I think it's gonna turn out really cool when we're finished. Wait till you see the leaves, what I did for the leaves. Ooh, that was a big bump. I wonder if Dave fell out of bed. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people have a problem with the ends popping out. You just have to tuck them. If you know, some of them don't want to stay down, just add a dab of glue. Um, add a dab of glue, and then you can push them back down. Where was I? I think I'm all done. So when you want to make sure that you got them all, flick. And if anything comes loose, you missed one. All right, we got them off. Look how full this is already, and we're only on row th four. So we're gonna go back in. So I'm gonna pull this back, and you can see we're gonna start black here. Again, it's still going towards the outside of the board. Okay, where was I? Black, right here. Well, I apologize, this, th like I said, this mesh is really, really good hiding mesh. You probably won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm doing exactly like I did through the whole rows. And I just go around and as I put it in, I just kind of pin In and put it in. Yeah, you can use a little hot glue. I usually do that at the end. Some of them, you know, they just don't want to stay down and you have to kind of force them to stay down. A little hot glue takes care of that. No problem. And you can see how the I buy these little, I got these little sewing clips. They do work pretty amazing for helping you have, uh, holding your, your uh, mesh in for you. This is a horizontal wide stripe. It's the new mesh and we got it in all kinds of colors. It's, um, fairly inexpensive compared to the rest of the meshes. It's amazing for for any wreath, any flower, any obviously it's working really nicely for me for a rose. Nice high covering. This is going to be one big rose. Yeah, the winter rose turned out amazing. That's why I wanted to do another one. I just had to see if in fact, if I used a different mesh with the same method, would it turn out the same? 
and that's why it's one of those things where I, I wouldn't be able to sleep because I didn't know the answer. So I figured I'm going to do it live because I'm glutton for punishment. All right, another black. I'm so glad I wrote the, the pattern right on the board. Well, uh, Lorraine, you're probably not going to see anything right now anyways, because this is getting really full, unfortunately. It's not like when you use a, um, like a more of a value mesh, you can, it, it's uh, value mesh is a lot thinner. Like I can try and show you what I'm doing. It's gonna be really hard. All right, I think I am done that row. Again, I'm gonna flip it over because it really is hard to see if you got all of them so i just kind of flick and if it doesn't come loose like let's see like that one you know you got them all all right we are on the last row Look how big this is already, and we still have one more row to go. So you're gonna pull this back and you can see where the zip tie is, okay? And I am gonna start with black. Again, still going towards the outside of the board. This is the last row, and what you wanna do is kind of Take that tail and put it underneath the two that are already there. So let me see. When you flip it over, you can see that the tail is right there, but you, you won't be able to tell it's under. Wow, this is this is pretty full. orange so like I said I used 19 black and orange and 20 pieces of black and I'm simply just doing exactly what I was doing all the way through is putting the pedal in wrapping it around and kind of clipping it Push it back, put your tail in. And when you're building the rows, what's happening is the mesh kind of poofs out and pushes against all the other mesh and it will stay in formation. Oh, my nose is getting much better, much, much better. Thank you for asking. I'm almost about 90% better. <coughs> 
thank goodness, because I'm going to be on Pinterest TV, which I didn't even know there was such a thing until I got an invitation to be on there. Pinterest TV tomorrow at, well, it's 8 Eastern time, but 5 Pacific time. Now, once you do one rose, I know it kind of probably looks a little complex. It really isn't. As long as you just keep going around and adding the petals the same way. It's really full right now because this mesh, like I said, this mesh is, is really good for this. You can use, if there's no orange stripe, you can use, you can just use black and buy a roll of black and black, right? A roll of orange, black and purple, black and red, black and red for Halloween would be super cool. We're almost done. Almost done. Not bad. Yes, it's definitely a full flower. It certainly is. And considering I probably, there's maybe $10 worth of mesh in this rose. Because I still have, I still have quite a bit left. This is what I have left of the black. This is what I have left of the orange and black. And I have extra petals here, so. Okay, I think we're almost done. I think we have one more to do. So you'll see, you know, these tails popping up and I'm gonna show you how you can take care of those. Take all these clips off. I'm very happy with this mesh for making a rose. Okay, so. So you're going to go around, see how these some of them pop up. What you can do is you can take a little bit of glue, a little bit of hot glue, put a dab just on the corner, and just kind of put it down where it's supposed to be. Normally, they, they stay down, but sometimes, you know, you have to show them who's boss. And then the outside, we're going to puff this up. We don't want a flat rose. There we go, because my arm. And if once you get to, used to making roses, if you do a, a lot of them, you will want to start from the center and work your way out. Because as you can see, because my arm kept resting on the outside row, um, they kind of got smushed. And that's the only way I could teach is if I did from the outside row to the inner, because then you, got, you can see, you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. Pretty cool. Who would have thunk a black Halloween rose? Okay. I'm gonna put some leaves on them. So I got, like I said, I got this much left and I still have, I cut way too many. So one, two, three, four, five, 
five and then this. And then the black and orange, I only have one left. And I have about half a roll. All right. Just want to kind of pull these up without the corners, just the center part, because you don't want it looking like a cinnamon bun. So it puffs out really nicely. All right, now the green, I used, again, I used this wide, this olive green, I think, or no, it's sage green on the website, I believe. Um, it's a sage green, but I thought, okay, that doesn't look Halloween-y to me. So what I did is I cut four pieces at 10 and a half by 10 and a half of this green. And I went and I, <laughs> I don't know what made me think of this, but I did. I went and I dabbed just black craft paint onto the green. And it doesn't even, it, I guess if you scrape it, it'll come off. But I actually made camo mesh. <laughs> uh, I wasn't planning on making camo mesh. I just wanted to kind of dirty up the green so it would look more Halloween-ish. And it made camo mesh. So you can <laughs> take mesh. And what I did is I just used... Um, black craft paint from the dollar store and a makeup sponge. So this is just one of those makeup sponges you can get at the dollar store. There's like 25 of them in a bag. And I just pounced black paint onto the green and literally made camo. <laughs> Wasn't going, that wasn't the look I was going for, but it's pretty cool. So you can paint this mesh, which is really kind of different. So what I want to do is I'm going to put leaves on it. So we'll just flip this over. We're going to put a hanger. So let's just put a zip tie going through. Now, I don't know if a Halloween rose needs uh, leaves, but I thought, I'll just put a couple on just to see how it looks. Okay, cut that. Now, my leaves, what you're going to I'm going to do is I'm going to put maybe two here and two here. That's all I'm going to do. Okay? So, one two on this zip tie or this hole and two on this hole. And I'll do it upside down so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna put a zip tie because we're gonna use the outside of the board. And I'm just gonna do, you're going to use it curl down, 10 and a half inch piece, so curl down, you, Obviously, you guys know this is curl up, curl down into a diamond shape, the surged edge at the top left, and I'm going to take a pleat or pinch from the bottom corner all the way up to the top corner, just like this, and flip it up. Okay, and I'm going to put a clip or a clothespin on it because I want to do another one. I'm going to put two leaves in one zip tie. So again, curl down, pleat from corner to corner. Flip it, flip it. I know it looks like camel mesh. Pretty cool. Add some little bit of brown in there and everything. I think I may just came up with a new thing. So I'm going to take these two and put one inside the other. 
like this. So I have four leaves. One, two, three, four. Now I want the good side facing the wreath. So because I'm doing it upside down, I'm going to flip these so you can see that that's the bad side. And I'm going to take my leaves and put the center right in between the tail and the head of the zip tie and just go around it. Oh, that's super cool. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? Oh my gosh. And I've tied the zip that tighter and then cut that off. That is so cool. So it kind of looks like dirty leaves. Love it. All right. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing right across right here. And I'll show you how to do it with it on the table. So you're going to put your zip tie through that hole, lay the zip tie tail on the table. So the zip tie kind of makes a L shape on this side. And again, you're gonna make your, your petals. And it's pretty cool because the paint is not coming off of this mesh. That is so wicked cool. Where's the other green one? Oh, right here. Yeah, you can make, you could put brown in there and make, literally make a camel mesh. Get pink and make pink camel. So I got my leaves, I'm gonna put this one right in the center of these two. So again, I got four leaves. I don't have to flip it over because I'm going to actually put the center right on top of the board where the zip tie is going to go around. That didn't work well because my zip tie turned. Now the reason I don't do the leaves first is because as you can see, my arm, when I was making the rose, my arm goes, um, hits the, the outside row a lot. So by the time you, by the time you finish your wreath, your leaves are going to be all tattered. So I always do the leaves right at the end. Although a Halloween, this is a Halloween rose, so I think tattered leaves would be okay. Okay, let's try this again. It's much easier doing it upside down. Tighten it. I'm just going to make sure. Okay, get the tighten. Cut the zip tie off. That's pretty cool. I'm going to put my skull in the center. Just going to glue it kind of right in the center, maybe. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's kind of wicked cool with that skull right in the center of the rose. 
just gives it something, doesn't it? I don't know. What do you guys think about the skull in the center? Yeah? Let's just go around a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this corner to make it a little bit tighter so that my skull will sit in there properly. Glue is our friends when we're crafting. Yeah? Hi, Tisha. Yes, I am much better. Antibiotics are wonderful things. All right. I'm going to put him just going to pump some glue on the back of this bad boy. Where's this top? And he is going right in the center of our rose. Pretty cool. Now, I'm not a really big Halloween fan, but I know there's lots of people that are Halloween fans that would probably absolutely love this design. Right? All right. It, that is, yeah, it is a perfect touch. It just kind of gives it more of a creepy looking look here. Tighten this a little bit more. Alrighty, that's it. I get to go to bed now. That wasn't bad. So that technique does work, even with this kind of mesh. That's what I was trying to figure out. Did it just work because I was using a soft snowball mesh? Or will it work with a using even a stiff plastic or more plastic mesh? And I think it is super wicked cool. And it's these leaves, right? Look at these leaves. They're supposed to be dirty, but they're camel. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. Had uh, hands, like skull hands coming out right on top of the leaves. That would really look cool too. But you guys got the gist. There's all kinds of things you can do with it. There is the side of it. Alrighty. Oh, my skull. He wasn't dry yet. Darn. <laughs> you gonna try it? Yeah, I, I just thought, okay, I'm just gonna dirty these leaves up. And as I'm put pouncing the black on, I'm like, Hey, this is looking like camo. <laughs> we can make our own camo mesh. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me. And um, yeah, now that I have this out of my mind, I can actually go to bed and sleep. You're going to try the leaves, yes. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching and hanging out with me, even though it's quarter to 11. Okay, everybody, have a wonderful night. Look how cool. A Halloween rose. Cool. Bye, everybody.